Hello everyone, this is All Out of Sequel, with a new presentation for you, all about the Arbalos and the Pappas chain. So this is a mathematical extension, and I expect that this will probably be divided into at least three different parts. So yeah, without any further ado, let's move along, shall we? So just as for some prerequisites for this, uh, for this lesson, and for the record, I, I actually gave this lesson as part of a grade for my discrete math class, but what I'd recommend as some familiarity is some familiarity with, the, of course, the formulae for area and circumference of a circle, uh, and, of course, some amount of mathematical proofing. Uh, specifically, I'd, I'd like us to be aware of the Pythagorean theorem and Thales' theorem. Now, Thales' theorem describes basically that if we have a triangle that is inscribed within a circle, so all of its vertices lie on the circle, and one of the sides of the triangle is a diameter of the circle, then we know the triangle is in fact a right triangle, and the angle outside, or the angle opposite, the diameter, is a right angle. So that's Thales' theorem. And most of the pictures using this PowerPoint I've created by myself, uh, some of them are screenshots from Wolfram MathWorld or CutTheKnot.org. There's one exception to that, which is on the title slide, which you just saw, um, because that also, I think, came from Wolfram MathWorld. But anyways, moving on. Just as a bit of an introductory part of the lesson, I wanted to pose a few questions for you. For one thing, for figure one, can you find the area of the above shaded region? So it's a relatively simple question, a relatively simple problem, but it is related to something we'll get to later. Uh, for figure two, can you find the relationship between the areas of these two blue circles that are tangent to these semicircles here? And tangent to this altitude right here. So can you find the relationship between those areas? And in figure three, can you find a general rule for the height of each circle or the radius of each circle in figure three? So this presentation will actually address all three of these questions, and ideally, even more than that. So for centuries, mathematicians have studied a very fascinating geometric structure involving circles being tangent to each other, and semicircles, in fact, being tangent to each other as well. Uh, so this PowerPoint will, of course, describe many of these properties and theorems. So for one starting definition, we will consider the arbolos, which is the space or region that is bounded by two tangent semicircles nested inside one large semicircle. So I'll give you a diagram of what that is, but I, I just came up with this definition, and, and I'd like you to just, because this is, this is going to be important. Uh, and of course, a Pappas chain is the family or chain of circles that are fitted inside this arb arbolos, each one tangent to the two circles and the over overarching semicircle. So we'll see what that really means right here. So. We start out with this sort of image when we have two circles nested inside one very large circle, and they're tangent to each other. And in fact, they're all, yeah, they all, all the centers lie on the same diameter. But normally we only consider the, uh, the top half of this circle, basically. And this is why we keep calling them semicircles, you know. Because it's only considering the top half, or the top hemisphere, of this whole thing. Uh, so then, actually, from here, it's very interesting. We can consider the, uh, basically, a chain of circles, or a family of circles that are, and I'll, 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 they'll show up in a moment, um, sort of tangent to these semicircles. And this is what we call the Pappas chain. Now, I've only put up about six of these circles, uh, of these blue circles, but in theory they could continue, you know, we could continue generating them being tangent to the semicircles all the way up until, well, essentially to infinity, uh, which means that they're approaching, they're sort of approaching this point of tangency right here. Now in terms of sort of the history of this, we have uh, Archimedes, who is according to some sources, considered to be one of the three sort of greatest mathematicians of all time, actually. Uh, he lived, you know, living during the 3rd century BCE, and he's also thought to be the author of something called the Book of Lemmas, uh, which is a manuscript of about 15 propositions, or 15 theorems, 
related to geometry. And, uh, yeah, you can think of that as sort of it, its own kind of extension of Euclid's elements, actually. You know, Euclid's The Elements was essentially the founding book or the founding manuscript of Euclidean geometry, obviously. And this sort of extended that uh, with a, a, a variety of theorems that Archimedes proved. So that's, that's very interesting. Uh, now, moving on, and of course we have this sort of, I guess it's a bust of Archimedes right there as our picture. But anyways, um, now there's also Pappas of Alexandria, another very important mathematician uh, living in the 3rd third and 4th centuries CE. And, you know, some sources give different dates of when he lived, but he's confirmed around uh, Common Era 320, uh, the year 320. Uh, and, yeah. He is widely considered, actually, to be the founder of modern projective geometry, so that's also quite interesting, and another important bit about him. And, you know, I, I encourage you to, to research these mathematicians. It's really, yeah, it's really interesting. It, it sort of connects to the history of mathematics, and it's all something that is sort of unappreciated, in my view. Uh, you know, the history of mathematics is not only interesting, but sort of an important to research, an important thing to research in and of itself, um, uh, whenever you're learning something new in mathematics. But anyways... There's actually an attached worksheet that I'd suggest you work on. Uh, I'm going to try to make it a public Google Doc, assuming that works successfully. Um, so there's there's an accompanying uh, worksheet for this PowerPoint that I actually gave to the other students as, as I was presenting this originally. But anyways, um, yeah, that's just something you can check out if you like. But in addition to that, we have class... Well, we have a... We have a an exploration to do. So we're going to look at the proofs and theorems of the the uh, Averroes and Pappus chain. So let's get right to it. Uh, the first lemma in Archimedes' Book of Lemmas is uh, used in some of the following theorems. So I figured we should go over it. Let's say we have one large circle and we have its diameter, one of its diameters, right here. So that's, that's what we're seeing. And let's say we have a smaller circle with its own diameter and they meet at a certain point. Say this point right here. And so from here, what Proposition 1 actually states is that if these two diameters are parallel to each other, if we have a pair of diameters that are parallel to each other, then what we can do is we can actually declare these three points, basically this point, this point, and the point at which they intersect, we can actually declare them to in fact be collinear. So that's very interesting. You know, in fact, this uh, proposition one is occasionally used in, yeah, in, in the theorems later on in Archimedes' Book of Lemmas. Moving onward, uh, the main theorem that I'd like to show you here is uh, Archimedes' proposition four, because in fact, propositions four, five, and six are the ones that actually directly pertain to the Arbolos. And so the whole premise of this is that we can use the Pythagorean theorem along with Thales' theorem multiple times in order to find the relationship between t and the radii of these circles. So here what we're seeing is that t, I'm defining it to be the altitude from this point of tangency right here between the two smaller circles. So that point of tangency there is a, uh, an altitude that we're extending upward to meet the large circle right here. So it's that segment length, which I, which I am calling T. T. So, uh, yeah, the whole idea is we're finding the relationship between T and the radii of the circles. And in order to do this, we can use the help of this segment right here, and another segment, which I'll draw in right here. And we'll see how they'll be useful in a moment. In fact, we know from Thales' theorem, which I just mentioned earlier, 
uh, since we have basically a triangle that's inscribed within a circle, you know, all three points are on the, all three vertices of the triangle are lying on the large circle. So what we can know, and we also know that one of the sides, of course, is the diameter of the circle based on how we've constructed it. So we know that this angle is in fact a right angle by Thales' theorem. And that can prove to be very useful later on. So if we consider... Let's define two variables, L1 and L2, to describe actually the, well, this is basically the um, lengths of these two hypotenuse segments that we're constructing, that we just constructed just recently. Um, and so based just on Pythagorean theorem, we can say that you know, what we see here is actually at least three right triangles because basically T describes that segment which is parallel or, excuse me, perpendicular to the diameter. So this segment basically that I'm calling segment T, you know, T is the length of this segment. And that turns out to be perpendicular based on how it's constructed. It's perpendicular to the diameter of the circle. And so, you know, because it's perpendicular, it, it forms a right angle there. And so from that, we can consider the two smaller right triangles formed by 2R1 and T. So, you know, quantity 2R1 squared plus T squared equals L1 squared. And another right triangle we see is 2R2 quantity squared plus T squared equals L2 squared. Now, if we sum these equations together, we get this. And on the right side of the equation, particularly I'm talking about the right side of the equation, if we sum L1 squared and L2 squared, by again, by Thales' theorem and, and the Pythagorean theorem, we know that that's equal to D squared. That in fact, it is that that's another hypotenuse, which is the diameter of the circle. So the diameter squared. And what do we know about the diameter? Well, the diameter is equal to twice R1 plus twice R2. So, for this reason, we can in fact combine these two equations and substitute in for D and make it just in terms of R1 and R2. And so here's the rest of the proof, basically. What we do is we substitute in for D squared, so that's quantity 2R1 squared plus 2R2 squared squared. We can expand that out and get, on the right side, 4R1 squared plus 8R1 R2 plus 4 R2 squared, and from here it's somewhat convenient because in fact there are terms that cancel out. We have a 4 R1 squared on both sides of the equations, we can cross that out, and we in fact have a 4 R2 squared on both sides of the equations, so that those also cross out. And from there we can actually solve for T in terms of R1 and R2. And this is our solution. T equals 2 times the square root of R1, R2. And so here are some observations and interpretations of this. Uh, first of all, the quantity, the square root of R1, R2, can be called, in fact, the, the geometric mean of R1 and R2. So T actually has a length that is twice the geometric mean of the two radii. So that's interesting in, in itself. And furthermore, with a little bit of more deduction and substituting in for uh, the formula for the area of a circle, we can actually consider the area of the arbolos, at least in the top half, just the top half of the diagram shown, to be equal to the area of the blue circle, which can be generated here. There it is. The blue circle. So what this is supposed to say is that the blue the blue circle of diameter T, if we take the area of that, we actually get the area of the arbolos above the diameter. So that's very interesting. Again, this is this is the whole premise of Archimedes Proposition 4. And so thank you very much for watching. You know, I'm glad we were able to at least get through that proof. And uh you know, coming soon, what we'll do next is we'll answer question number two regarding the relationship between these two blue circles. So, again, thank you very much for watching, and uh, more is on the way.